What's up, DC News? Back another video on Injustice Year Zero. Now, today we're checking out issue number seven. This uh, whole comic is written by Tom Taylor. And so far, the series has been pretty good, guys. It's been pretty cool. I really like Joker. Like, he killed Alan Scott, Green Lantern, and Wesley Dodd's um, Sandman last issue. Killed him easily. And now, pretty much, our heroes, the Justice League, who admire the Justice Society so much, it's showing past issues are going to try to find out who did this. They don't know it's the Joker because Joker got pretty much hold of uh, pretty much the amulet of Opelfist so he can use it to control people and lead them to their death. So we'll see what Joker does in this issue, what Batman does, how he gets involved, and how the story progresses. Because as you guys know, this story, Injustice Year Zero, is a prelude to the Injustice um, game. The, well, actually, no. It's a prelude to the Injustice comic, the original one, right? So we see how all this leads up to Superman pretty much losing Lois Lane. But yeah, guys, if you're not caught up in the story, I'll link down below in the description my whole playlist on um, the past six issues so you get caught up. Or you go actually buy the issue digitally, all right? Go buy it, read it, support the comic industry. And if you guys are ready, let's dive into Injustice Year Zero, number seven. This story opens up at the Justice Society headquarters. You see Jay Garrick. He says, Hal. So Hal Joy and Jay Garrick are meeting up. And Hal Joy says, Jay, I came as soon as I heard. How's Alan? And Jay Garrick says, Dr. Midnight has done all he can, but we won't know what happens next. And Jay says, you hear what Batman thinks happened? So Batman's been investigating, right? So he has a conclusion. And Hal says, I did. You buy it for a second? And Jay says, of course not. Alan has been my friend for too many years to count. Especially because some of those years get fuzzy when you add up the time we all spent trapped in another dimension. There's no way he hurt Dodds. And Hal says, I agree. I don't care what it looks like. Until I know this wasn't an attack, I'm not leaving him alone. So, they don't agree with Batman. They don't think that um, pretty much Alan Scott killed Wesley Dodds. Which he technically did. Joker just caused him to do that, right? But now we go to pretty much Alan Scott. He's in pretty much the um, hospital and he's with his husband, right? Now, Al Scott, he's pretty much dead. He's gonna die. And his husband's at his bedside. And that's when the husband says, Excuse me? He's like, Oh, it's you. And we see Superman. Now, Superman says, Please don't get up. And the husband says, I've already answered Batman's questions. Superman says, I'm not here to ask you questions. I just want to check in and see if you're okay. And the husband says, I thank you, Superman. And he continues to say, Batman said there's evidence Alan stabbed Wesley. He wouldn't. And Superman says, I know. And I'm really not here to question you. And the husband says, I had black coffee this morning. Superman says, sorry. And um, the husband says, Alan was supposed to get mil milk. He was hanging out to save the world. And he was supposed to get milk on the way back. I should have raised the alarm when he did come home. But when you're with someone who can do what he can do, you know that means sharing him with the world. It means he might not always come home when he wants to. And then he says, do you have someone you bring uh, milk home for? And Superman says, I do. I don't always come home when I want to. And he says, do they keep you grounded? And Superman says, yeah, she does. And the husband says, that's good. I couldn't imagine what would happen to you people without good, honest, mere mortal pulling you back down to earth. And he says, I'm Jim. And Superman says, I know Alan has told me a lot about you. And the husband says, actually, Jim says, that sounds ominous. And Smith says, all good things. And Jim says, I thought you didn't lie. And Smith says, mostly good things. And Jim says, I get it. People need to vent, even uh, flying people. I want to thank you. And Smith says, for what? And Jim says, the moment you showed up, you lessened the burden on him. He didn't feel he had to do it all anymore. You gave us more time, Superman. And Superman says, it's Clark. Clark Kent. Superman puts his hand out to Jim, and then they shake hands. And Jim says, you didn't have to tell me. And Superman says, I think Alan would like us to know each other. And Superman says, he will wake up, Jim. You will have more time together. And they hug. So, yeah, as it shows that Superman, he's very good at pretty much inspiring hope in people, right? So, even when somebody's at pretty much uh, their loved one's bedside, Superman's there to pretty much help him out, right? Now, what I also like is that it shows that pretty much uh, Lois Lane helps Superman keep him down to earth, right? So, he doesn't pretty much come evil, right? Come a tyrant. It helps him keep him human, which that's one of the big parts of his character and what makes Lois Lane so important. Now, as we continue, we then see Batman with different Just Society members. And Batman says, what did you learn? Superman says, I didn't go in there to interrogate him, Batman. And Damian Wayne says, what? That's not how good cop, bad cop works. And Superman says, in this case, Damien, it was bad cop, no cop. Batman says, you can hear Jim's heartbeat, see his eyes. Was he nervous? Was he lying? And Superman says, no. Now, a JSA member says, we're missing something. Security footage shows Green Lantern and Sandman talking here. Al Alan was assessing the classified information. Batman says, then they left together. After which, all evidence points to Green Lantern stabbing Sandman in the chest. Now, this JSA member is then 
concludes to you from the cleanliness of the wound, I say Alan constructed a blade from ring energy. Superman says, what information did Alan ask access? And Batman says, names and addresses. And Superman says, of whom? And Batman responds, of the entire Just Society. Now, guys, I really like this. This last issue we saw Joker, he's not just going after one Just Society members. He's going after all of them. He's trying to kill every single one of them, which that fits with the Joker character. It makes me excited to see what Joker's going to do, but kind of worried because we're about to see some of the best JSA members get killed, all right? But next one we see is one of the JSA members is inside his house, right? And he has a package, right? This person shows up and they say, package for Will Everett. And this guy says, yes, that's me. Now the mailman says, if you could just sign here. And Will Everett says, sure. But that's when this a mailman says, thanks, Amazing Man. And you see he's controlled by Joker. And Amazing Man says, what you call me? And that's when we see this mailman take out a gun about to shoot him. He shoots, but Amazing Man turns to steel. He protects himself. But we see his mailman and says, huh? I thought you could only turn to something you touched. And he says, ah. And we see that Amazing Man touched the doorknob to turn himself into this metal, right? And the bullet just comes off of the Amazing Man's chest. He grabs his mailman and says, Who are you? Who sent you? And Joker, speaking through this mailman, says, Oh, I'm not going to make it that easy. And he shoots himself. So Joker just caused his mailman to kill himself. So we see Joker back at the lair. And he's like, damn it. And Harley says, what? And Jerry says, I should just grab one of their minds instead of resorting to a nobody off the street. But I want them to see it coming. And Harley says, yeah, but you can't have everything. It's like the old saying goes, sometimes you just have to be content with being able to control the brains of your enemies. And Jerry says, but it's not as much fun if they don't. And Harley says, don't what? And Jerry says, of course. And Harley says, is this a revelation you're keeping to yourself or? And Jerry says, I know what's missing. And Harley says, what are you looking at me like that for? And you see a uh, Joker grab Harley by the back, gets behind her. And Harley says, uh, what you doing, Mr. J? And Jerry says, I'm finessing, Harley. I'm finding that sweet spot of control and awareness. It'll be far funnier if these heroes know what they're doing while I make them do it. And he says, I appreciate the help, doll. And Harley says, put in. And she says, uh, you really don't have to. And, and Jerry says, jump. So he pushes Harley off this whole place. Harley jumps and she lands down. She's pretty much broken. And he says, Harley, Harley, don't overreact. And Harley finds this note. It says, in case a moment of clar uh, clarity, break glass. So Harley notices that, well, she's noticed this before, but this is like the big breaking point that she's going to leave the Joker. And then she picks up her bat. And Joker says, it's not like anything important's broken. And he says, you know I can't just make you open the door. What was that? Harley. He screams, Harley. Harley walks away on her own. And it says, next, exit strategy. Now, this is a very good issue. The ending was really cool seeing Harley just leave the Joker. It's not the biggest cliffhanger, but I think it was executed well. See, Joker just grab her and push her off this ledge and see her finally leave him it was a really intense moment. Also, seeing Joker try to kill the Amazing Man was really great. And I like seeing Amazing Man actually like, nah, you can't kill me. And he pretty much him grabbed the doorknob. That was really a great moment. And then Superman being Superman. I really think that Tom Taylor should write a Superman book. Because that one scene between Superman and Jim was really a strong scene. It shows that Tom Taylor knows Superman as a character. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I have to say about this issue. And I'm going to give it an 8.7 out of 10. I thought it was a solid issue. You should definitely check it out. And you guys should stay tuned up because I'll be reviewing issue number 8 when it comes out. But guys, the comments below to know about this issue. Did you love? Did you hate? What was your favorite part from this issue? What would you rate it down below out of 10? Uh, what is the worst, obviously? 10 is the best. And what are your theories for next issue? If you guys like me, give a big thumbs up. You should make subscribe to my next Injustice Year Zero video. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Peace out.